garden quickly before I have to gather tonight's ingredients and I'm going to plant a few things. I'm going to plant some nasturtiums along my wall just to hold the bank together and it's really ugly and I hate it so I want to make it a little bit pretty. I also want to stop that grass from running down because it is a pain in the bum. So um, my dream is that that bank will be full of medicinal herbs and flowers. Flowers for the bees, medicinal herbs for the bees and for me and my family. <laughs> um, yeah and just to drown out all that annoying runner grass because it really irritates me. Um, yeah, so it will go all the way along and then right at the end there we'll have the massive hot house and that will be for our trees to go out into the food forest just to grow them quickly. Um, also be for my excess seedlings and if I ever want to sell some plants um, they can all go in there too just to get nice and big. So that's the plan for that ugly area up there. This area here I want to be full of flowers and then over there in the other veggie patch that will have things like pumpkins and corn. I can do my three sisters um, thing again where I had squash underneath the corn and beans up the corn. Um, have my melons in there. I think that was about it. We want to grow a lot of pumpkins to see us through winter. Um, it was really great having the pumpkins um, this year but I'd love to have more um, yeah, for breakfast, easy lunches, and then to put in dinners as well, you know, just, it's so versatile. Um, but I want to show you these gorgeous flowers in my jungle. I can't say these, I don't know what they're called, it's something like ranicles, Ran ranicles? I don't know. The first time growing them in amongst these weeds, but they are beautiful. I can't wait to have more colours, oh I've got a yellow one. so exciting. I can't wait to clean this mess up but we need to um, fix a couple of things on the mulcher and get some cardboard and a bit of time too. So first and most important area is that area and then I'll kind of work on this area down here and then eventually probably next year I'll work on this area. <laughs> oh, you'll put in the basket? Mm -hmm. And this? Wait a minute. This one here? This one? Yep. This one? Yep. Fit in the basket? No, that's that's alright. Hey. some of these pea flowers. Just when you eat it, really sweet, tastes like a pea. It's awesome. I've had something go in my carrot patch. I found carrots all over my lawn. I actually asked the kids if they'd gone snacking and maybe missed some. But look at that. So annoyed. We use carrots daily, twice daily, and that's just annoying. For lunch today I made chicken soup, and in it I had carrots, turnips, um, celery, um, Chinese broccoli, and... Kale flowers, but before they opened up they looked like a little bro broccoli florets. Um, and I also popped in a pumpkin in there that I had grown last season. Uh, I think that's it. I think that's all that was in there with a little bit of barley from my pantry. 
Um, and this is it here. The leftovers anyway, so they'll go into the fridge and I'll probably eat this for breakfast tomorrow. It doesn't look very appetizing, but that is farm cooking, I suppose. Cooking from what you have in the garden. And for dinner, we've got a lamb, well you can't really see that. A lamb pot roast. And we're going to make a salad from the garden using lettuce, pea flowers. These taste like peas. Um, these are cow peas, so they're not very nice to eat um, as peas, but the flowers are delicious. And some carrots. And I'll make a dressing with some of my garlic. Dijon mustard and olive oil. It's my favorite dressing and it goes really, really well with lamb and chicken and beef. Everything really. I'm pretty tired today, so I didn't make my um, my butter, but I have popped my um, fermented cream in the fridge. I find that if I leave it in there for a few days, it becomes more cultured and it has a better flavor anyway. Um, but we are out of butter, so um, I might make that tomorrow and I'll show you how. And this is my um, yogurt and you can see how thick it is. It's, it's just peeling away from the jar. You can see that it's just sliding away from the jar. Paul's just propagating on our dining room table <laughs> as I film this. Potting up some of the seedlings that are growing inside under the grow lamps. These are a permaculture plant um, called Albizia something or other. And they're a nitrogen fixer. And they're so beautiful. Look at these beautiful leaves. Can't wait to put these out in the food forest. But back to my yogurt. <laughs> it's really nice and thick. Um, look at that. And you can make it much thicker than that by lining a colander with a muslin cloth and letting it drain for a few hours to six hours, depending on how thick you like it. Um, you can even make a labna, which is a cheese um, or a type of cheese. It's not really a cheese, but it's um, called a cheese. <laughs> um, it's basically really, really, really thick yogurt and you can put some spices and herbs in it and it's really nice. Um, but the kids will eat that as it is with some yogurt, with some, the kids will eat that as it is with some honey and some nuts and some fruit if we've got it. Um, I like it thicker with a bit of honey. Um, but yeah, that's how easy it is to make yogurt and that's a really nice thick one. I've seen some people make yogurt and it's really stringy and watery and I don't really like stringy, watery yogurt, it's gross. Um, but I really like this one. I'm, I'm really happy with it. It's all on your starter culture. I have made it before and it was stringy and watery and gross and it wasn't very nice. Um, it's just finding the right starter culture to get the desired thickness and consistency. It's all about the starter culture. Yeah. See you guys tomorrow.